Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Well, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. As I said before, we started out, we had an amazing uh, previous hour, and we are continuing it. It is about the heart. It is about what we can unlock. And you just heard us talking, Benny, right, about passion, about how important that is to things. But what is it that we can do to unlock the seven secret powers of the heart? Yes, uh, today, uh, Shai Tubali is joining me here today. But first, let me say hi to Mr. B. Hi, Benny. Hi, Pat. Yes, passion is very uh, respectable. Yeah. And we need to have that. Yeah. Got to have it or mm-hmm. like, guess what? If it's not coming from the heart, then where the heck is it coming from? Right. I mean, think about it. Think about the greats in life, the people we remember, and then also the people we may not know that are there doing the things that they love to do. I know for me that the people that have helped me, and I've talked about this in my life, I have had hundreds, hundreds of angels, real live angels in this world to put a hand out to help me. What is it though about their hearts? What is it about them that helped us do that? Why is it that we connect with all of you every day here on the network? What is it about this thing that we're calling positive talk that was like breathing for me on day one, but I didn't know why? What was I in search for? And by the way, I'm not quite sure that I have got there. But today, Shai Jabali is joining me here today, you know, as somebody, a chakra expert, a spiritual teacher, authority in the field of Kundalini and the subtle body system. Somebody that is out in the world that has said, look, I have written over 20 books on spirituality and self-development, and today the heart is coming here to talk with us. The heart. It is more often associated with vulnerability than hidden powers. However, I will say this, for me along my life, A large part of my life, my heart was very closed. But I will tell you that there was something about life experiences that changed me, that changed where I would be, that changed my ability to be vulnerable, to be open. But the book, as he is going to talk with us today about, it's also this very powerful, powerful thing. Shai, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I want to start with just talking with you before we talk about the seven chakra types. Mm. I want to talk with you about the misunderstanding that I think we have about the heart. And what I mean by that is, you know, for a long time, it was the mind is the wise thing. The heart really doesn't have any wisdom. And I want to start out by saying that is just not the truth. Yes, yes, and <laughs> that's a good starting <laughs> point, surely. Yes, uh, well, that, that's that's a, a misconception, which of course is uh, is a myth uh, told to us uh, constantly by our very own misleading mind. <laughs> the the thing is that that the mind has a, a great function. It uh, it should tell us uh, um, how. Uh, to how to function in the world, it gives us uh, uh, information and uh, and uh, and uh, practical uh, solutions. But it it has absolutely no understanding and no communication with uh, the meaning of life, with the why of things, and uh, and 
So when we try to uh, to to tap into our mind in order to to receive uh, guidance, uh, to receive wisdom, to receive even even strength and uh, and confidence and knowing, uh, we are finding uh, more often than not that we are uh, we end up uh, conf- more confused than we than we started. So. This is this is where we need to understand our the why of things, the meaning of our life, the uh, our deepest knowing, our deepest confidence uh, lies elsewhere. Okay, I love this, and I love that you start out the book by saying the myth of the fragile heart. You know exactly. how I know this is a myth. Um, when I was six years old, my mother passed away very suddenly, mm-hmm. and. Um, I wasn't even there. I was in Catholic boarding school. And what I learned about that experience, which I then found out later, she had committed suicide. Uh I didn't die from it. You know what I mean? It was crushing for me. But I, I didn't die. There is something that I can explain about that experience. Something that happens. Something about how my life then became open, even from a young age, that you explain in the book. Why do we want to believe that the heart is fragile? And what is it if it's not fragile? Yeah, well, we we believe it is fragile. First of all, thank you for sharing this extraordinary story. It's uh, it's quite unbelievable because I guess this is the difference between uh, between, uh, what we call the... uh, um, a post-traumatic syndrome and uh, and the uh, and the possible uh, positive outcome of uh, of of trauma. Trauma can actually help us grow, not uh, mm-hmm. necessarily make us vulnerable. It all depends how how we are going to approach it. And uh, and this is exactly the thing. Whenever we get hurt, whenever uh, so to speak, our heart breaks. We feel that we need to wall it up. We we feel that uh, that it. It is our tendermost part, and it should never get hurt again. And this is uh, this is actually a confusion because the more we wall it up, the more we try to to surround it with the wall and to protect it, actually we become more and more fragile. We become more breakable. So so that's uh, the the whole question: whether we're going to keep ourselves in the in the spirit of uh, of the of the fragile victim. Are we going to to understand that uh, that our heart is actually a source of power which we can uh, use? We can we can activate when as soon as we open it up completely, unconditionally, even willing to get hurt again and again and again. The amazing thing is that we never get hurt. You see, I because love it. That's the thing about the heart. It's uh, it's being open keeps it invulnerable. One of the things you talk about in the book, and I apologize if I don't if I don't quote this directly, uh-huh. but you you talk about this powerful resource of feeling right. And I think about this, and I was reading your book again, and I was thinking about how throughout my life that when I made decisions where Things, my words, not yours necessarily, Mm -hmm. things just felt right, but they also felt light, like there was a lightness about it, even in critical decisions, you know, like going back to school and spending $100,000 to do that Mm -hmm. never felt heavy, never felt wrong. It felt like, yes, it was that. Can you talk about the heart's ability to guide us like a guidance system? Yes, definitely. It sounds like you're already driven by that, driven by by what we can call heart knowing. And this is be- because the 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 mind is is by nature confused. Uh, the way the mind works is uh, is by by uh, bringing up all the time pairs of of opposite thoughts. And uh, and when we try to to make decisions, when we try to to know our way, to use our mind as a compass, what we actually get is uh, is two contradictory thoughts, and this keeps us, of course, uh, uh, indecisive or trying to to create some kind of a fake type of confidence. 
Mm. But if we uh, tap into our heart, we we realize that there is a, a sort of a direct knowing that comes from uh, where else from from the soul. Uh, because our heart is directly connected to to our soul, that remembers remembers where we meant to go, what we meant to do in this life. We have this programming inside, but we just need to to listen to it. And this is why we need to sink into the heart to to move away from from the mind when when whenever it comes to making uh, actual decisions, knowing where we should be. Mm. When we come back from break, I want to talk with you. For those of you just tuning in, Shai Tuvalu joining me here today, unlocking the seven secret powers of the heart. This is such an important conversation, especially in the world we live in today. And why do I say that? I say that because, you know, the studies that are coming out about how we are being bombarded by information, 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 what they don't talk about is the heart connection and interaction that happens with the data. When we come back, we're going to talk about not only what the heart is, but how do we get to know it? How do we tap into its power? And then when we do that, how do we activate it? When we come back, we're also going to talk about chakra types. I don't know what my chakra type is, but I can't wait to find out. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. Are you tired of being tired? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the adrenal glands, the workhorse of the body? They are the means by which you position yourself in life for whatever comes your way. Tiny but mighty, producing hormones the body uses to promote energy and vitality. These adrenals determine how you respond to stress and when depleted, the body loses its ability to function powerfully when we need it most. The much needed adrenaline or epinephrine is not available for emergency situations. Cortisone and cortisol, the longer acting anti-stress adrenal hormones, can also become depleted due to the pace of our everyday lives. We overwork and undernutrition our most powerful ally that helps us to live the lives we desire. We are able to determine the optimum function of the adrenals and put your system back in balance. Contact us today to feel powerfully energized at 888-777-4232 or visit us at maryjanemack.com. A space of allowing radio with Coach Nancy Coco, welcoming all that wants to be present today. Tune in Thursdays every first and third week at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Coach Nancy helps you find a space of allowing. Join Coach Nancy to explore what lives at your edges and to bring more of yourself home. For more information, visit NancyCocoCoaching.com. Tune in to People Like Us Radio with Megan Lyons, transcending the trauma of the human experience. Megan will be raising the universal consciousness by empowering listeners with their own inner strength, working past trauma and abuse. Megan will show you how to find true healing and inner peace through the art and practice of self-love. Tune in every first and third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. For more information about Megan and her work, visit EnterTheLightLLC.com. Calling all ladies. Are you struggling with neck, back, shoulder pain, or postural issues? You actually might have a related bra problem. Talk to Maria Monti at the Healthy Bra Company. She is a professional postural therapist who offers custom fitted, custom altered bras in 2,500 size combinations specific to your body type, shape, size, anatomical features, and breast weight. Call Maria today to find out more at 360 815 3205. Beyond Symptom Management into True Wellness with Jessica Dooley on Purely You Radio. Tune in every third Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific as Jessica guides you to find and embrace your purest self. Not the self that is shown on social media, not the self that is created in your family's eyes, but your purest version of you. Purely You Radio supports true wellness, not just symptom management. For more information about working with Jessica Dooley, visit purelyyouhealing.com. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Yeah. What is your chakra personality type? Discover how to unleash your inner potential with Shai Tobali. But I wanted to open up the conversation today 
and talk about the heart. And the reason I wanted to do that is because I found myself as I was reading, reading his latest book, The Seven Chakra Personality Types, I was also struck by a previous book that he had written that um, really helped me understand more about me and my life. And then today, as I'm reading, you know, the rereading this book again, The Seven Chakra Personality Types, I was saying to him, I'm a little bit on the fence between two of these. And that's why I'm glad he's here today to talk about it. Um, Shai, thank you for joining me here today. Um, probably it's going to be clearer to you, but let's Uh talk about how the system was developed. And I also think that the reason I wanted to start out with the conversation about the heart Mm -hmm. is because I think that one of the things you do so brilliantly here is you talk about aligning with, you know, self-fulfillment and happiness, right? Yes. Those things to me are heart centered. I don't know. Am I on track with that? No, that, that, that's actually very wisely said. This is exactly a part of the heart's knowing that we, that we just uh, talked about. All right. So here are the seven chakra types. Many people would say, oh, yeah, I know about the types. But no, no, we don't. Because I went through the book and what I thought about each was a little bit different. Take us on a journey about what each type is. And then I'll, I'll put myself on a li- out on a limb and I'll tell you where I ended up. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, so of course, um, many people know, know the chakras, the seven chakras, but, uh, but it's, it's far less known that, uh, that they are deeply uh, associated with the seven personality types. So then the, uh, the, what we call the, the root chakra type, which is the first chakra, is uh, um, is associated with a personality type called the builders, and the builders are, are the ones that are all into the details of life. They are they they, they love the the material world and the, and they love understanding the the how of things uh, to um, uh, to uh, to create uh, laws and order and order uh, in in the world. And uh, that's why they love, uh, they are very social and they, they love creating routines and, and hard work um, and their families and their and tradition, their nation, their religion. So they are very deeply connected to, to the continuity of, uh, of, of time, to, to, to past, the nostalgia and the... Uh, and, uh, they can be, of course, a little bit uh, boring or dull, at least <laughs> considered by, by, by most other chakra types who like, uh, like more action, because they, they, they love actually the grayness of, of life since they see in them a, a, a great, in it a great um, a possibility for, for building a, a safe and solid life uh, into a great future for for us all. So so that's the uh, in a nutshell the 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 builders. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I clearly know that when I was reading that, I automatically thought about my best friend. And, but I was very clear that that's not who I am. Sometimes it's uh-huh. easier to figure out who you're not, right? But Mm. That doesn't mean, and this is what I want to be really clear about with personalities, you know, you do a brilliant job at talking about, you know, what each personality type brings to the world, what the world view is, right? And so this is not about one being, quote, better than the other. My sense is from your book, it's about clearly understanding the potentiality in each. Is that correct? It's more than correct. It's actually the 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 crux of the of uh, mm-hmm. of the whole tre- teaching, the whole transmission of the personality types, because uh, that the the whole system is meant first of all to to aid us in the process of of uh, of self love, self acceptance, to understand uh, who we are uh, means to to know that that is exactly our uh, inherent God given or cosmic given or or reality given. 
um, a programming which we meant to 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 carry out. That that's that's our our sole score. And in addition, it is meant to to promote a, a, an understanding of everyone else, because when we understand that everyone else is is programmed in a in a certain God given way, we we do not judge them anymore, but start to to realize that they also have a certain role in the scheme of things. Yeah, let's talk about the second uh -huh. chakra. Personality type. Yeah, well, I know you're laughing. Go ahead. Yes, I'm, I'm laughing because it's the laughing chakra and the, the laughing chakra type. They are deeply yeah. connected with, with humor. They are, they are, some of them are the best comedians of this world and they make us laugh. They make us see the, uh, the, 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 that life is also an entertainment, an entertainment park, uh, and that it's an adventure. It's not such a serious uh, thing just like the other types. Uh, tend to think, of course. Uh, so they are, I call them the artists, and they, they are the colorful uh, beings, uh, the, the, the sort of Peter Pan uh, uh, forever children um, type. And, uh, and they usually uh, ca can be associated with, uh, with the symbol of the butterfly. Mm -hmm. Because they they're simply hovering over flowers, the flowers of the different experiences. They love totality, and to to and they engage very deeply in things. But in the very same way, they can they can just fly away. So they don't like deep commitments, and they don't like uh, to think in terms of future. They are beings of the now, beings of the moment. Yeah, and it was interesting to see the folks that you listed here when I looked at them, and I just thought, wow, interesting, right? Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, uh, Frida Kahlo, uh, so many others, right? And, it, you know, yet when I went on, I love the way you describe the personality and how you talk about, you know, what direction or perhaps what they do or perhaps how they they live their lives, and especially in each of these personality types, about finding fulfillment. Um, I want to go on to the third one before we break again. And also, Benny will probably give away, let's give away a copy of the book right now, 1-800-930-2819. This is really quite a journey as you go through this. And I find myself looking at the book and saying, hmm, yeah, who do I know that's like that? But more importantly, who am I? The seven chakra personality type, Shai Tubali, joining me here today, 1-800-930-2819. Uh, and, and then I also want to talk to you after we look at the third one. People always ask when it comes to any kind of personality type, uh, am I kind of stuck with this or can I change it? Mm. What's your perspective on that? Because I know like when I took the first personality type thing, the Myers-Briggs, way back, um, I was so high on the introvert scale, my boss made me take it three times just yeah. to get, because she was concerned that I wasn't going to be able to do my job. This is when we didn't understand what introverts were, right? Mm -hmm. I, I scored so high on the introvert scale, I was like in the abnormal one-tenth of one whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and it affected my job because she's like, why are you even in this job? We now know that that's not the case. Can we change? Can our chakra personality type change? Let me ask you that. Well, I, uh, it, I, I, I'm afraid to say no because that, that would <laughs> sound yeah. quite uh, tragic. But, uh, yeah. uh, uh, but uh, it's all, yes, uh, but, uh, but it's... It's really uh, it, it's not that that we that we can actually change because uh, the chakra type describes our most inherent uh, uh, our deepest uh, uh, way to uh, come into contact with the world and that is a, a matter of almost like a soul perspective the way we perceive things the way we interpret them it's it's a very it's a very intimate type of perception in us but. Mm -hmm. We can definitely balance our chakra type to to a very high degree. We can we can illuminate. We can sharpen only the the, the best parts of this type and uh, and get rid of the problematic, the excesses of this type. 
And of course, as we all know, uh, we have seven chakras and we we can still balance and awaken all other chakras, which means that we have at our disposal a dormant uh, capacities of, of, of other chakra types in us. You see, all seven chakra types, they reside within us. It's just mm-hmm. that one and actually also a secondary one and a supportive one, uh, they constitute our most intimate and immediate perception of the world. Yeah. And by the way, I just want to say that uh, I loved asking you that question because fast forward to, I don't know, 20, 30 years later, people see me on air and they think she cannot be an introvert. I am as much an introvert mm-hmm. today as I've ever been. And my friends that are closest to me will tell you that. It is so hard for me at the end of the day for them to get me to go out and go dancing or do any of that. But let's talk about uh, the, let's go on and talk about the, the, the other chakras as well, uh-huh. because I love what you've written on these. And then, you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about where my dilemma is. All right, uh-huh. let's go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the, the, the third chakra type are the, are the achievers. Mm-hmm. And I think that the name says it all. It's uh, they are, they are the, the most energetic, uh, personality type. They have so much energy that they they actually don't know what to do with it, and uh, and and so so that that makes them workaholics, uh, or at least what other people other types uh, consider uh, being a workaholic. Um, uh, but they love it. They are they are people of action. They always need to do something. Or their schedules are packed, and they always need to set certain destinations. You know, before their before their eyes, they they always need to. To move forward, they are they are future oriented, and they want to be number one. They want to be the best in what uh, they do, and to to be become outstanding and to reach uh, the mountain top and uh, and uh, and achieve uh, a social status. So of course that makes them uh, uh, clearly unbalanced because they, they tend to be less emotional and less sentimental and uh, they are they are so practical that uh, that other types uh, might uh, get insulted or not understand how come they mm-hmm. they're not sharing the moment with them and they also have some tendency towards uh, um, towards uh, addictions and uh, and uh, and all kinds of mental distractions because they're so busy that they need somehow to to cool their energy down. Mm. Well, I could tell you and I could admit to this right out of the gate. That is not me for sure. <laughs> as a matter of fact, n- none of the three are as I went through and I took the test, mm. right? Uh, I think when I got to one of the questions, yes, I remember the first question. It was Uh very, very clear to me as I went through this and I said, okay, and Linda and I were doing this and and it asked, I don't believe in good intentions. I want to see results. Uh, Mm. I'm like, no, that is so not me. (laughs) So, I mean, so I love the way you've done this. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go on to part two. Emotional communicative types. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, First of all, let me ask you, how can people find out about you? How can they get a copy of the book? All of the above. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, uh, those of you out there love to give copies of the book away. 1-800-930-2819. Shai, how can folks find out about you? Well, there's of course uh, my uh, my official website, which is which is www.shaitubali.com, and uh, so that's that's of course the the central uh, uh, channel, and then there's a there is a YouTube channel which uh, which contains uh, 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 many videos. Actually, if we are if we've mentioned the 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 heart uh, uh, the unlocking of the heart powers, there are. Two guided meditations there that I would uh, particularly recommend: uh, the basic heart activation and uh, the heart gym exercise. Both uh, appear in the book, but uh, but I think uh, they're most uh, powerful when they're guided. Um, awesome. Yes. No, go ahead. So and yes, and then there there is a, a Facebook page. And uh, and of course, all all the books appearing uh, everywhere. These uh, uh, twenty three books that you've mentioned. <laughs> 
I know. I know. So when we come back, we're taking your questions, giving copies of the book away. When we come back, we're going to talk about the others. And also, I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the questions that Shai asks and how I got to decide on what my type is. I don't know if Shai's going to agree, but I can't wait to hear what he's got to say. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Join Jennifer Noel Taylor on the hit show, Quantum Touch Radio, supercharging your life on TransformationTalkRadio.com. You'll take a quantum journey as we reveal powerful yet simple steps to create more abundance, better health, emotional and mental vibrancy, and happier relationships using universal quantum touch principles. For more information, visit JenniferNoelTaylor.com. Demystifying the journey on From Here to There Radio with your host, Diane Garris. Tune in every third Wednesday, 4 p.m. Pacific Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com as Diane helps you get from where you are now to the life you envision. Get ready to get unstuck and move forward. Every show features a new special segment, New Age Notes, demystifying hot metaphysical topics of the day. For more information or to work with Diane, visit DianeGarris.com. Hi, I'm Jane Matango with Grow Your Soul Radio. Life is full of challenges and surprises. Your guidance is to move with the current, for it is in resisting the flow that creates problems. Ask your angels to help you open up your mind and heart to new ideas and fresh options. When you accept the possibility that there are other ways, previously unseen doorways will be open to you and you will move easily through change. There is a solution to every problem. So look at things with eyes of love and expectation. Then your life force will flow freely through you. You will feel healthy and alive and will be able to access the necessary resources and wisdom within yourself to help you through change. I'd love to take this journey with you. Visit my website, enlightened-path.com so we can explore all that is possible. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. High frequency healing for an amazing life with Source Light Radio. Join host Laura Barton each month on Transformation Talk Radio as she explores Source Light integration, a unique spectrum of energy, light, and frequency. Experience instantaneous healing and amazing shifts in consciousness with Source Light Integrations Radio. For more information on Laura and her work, visit SourceLightIntegrations.com. Yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody. I love this book. I mean, this is this is one of the books that I'm like going to get for my friends. And I don't I haven't talked to shy about it, but I'm going to get like for my friends for the holidays and we all get together. And so I, we all go away to Sleeping Lady once a year. I'm going to like bring the book and <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of making this up. I don't know if I'm offending you, Shy, or not. But I would love to share this with my friends just to see. Uh, for those of you out there, the seven chakra personality types. But there's a reason for understanding this. It's it's more than just fun. It's about understanding who we are and how we are in the world. Isn't that one of the reasons you wrote this? To give us a better understanding and and to help us balance, Right. Yes, exactly. It's uh, it's actually I think my my main motivation is to is to clarify the fact that there there are no there is no one meaning of life for for everyone that, that is valid there for everyone or one type of happiness. There are actually seven types of happiness or seven types of of meanings and of meaning and uh, and and uh, seven types of self fulfillment. And therefore, when we when we try to 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 follow some uh, you know this uh, one diet for all, or one uh, recipe for happiness for all, 
we end up actually suppressing uh, or overlooking uh, our most important parts, the ones that make us specifically happy and fulfilled. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and for me, this is uh, actually a, a, a map, a, a way to, to navigate uh, the different types of meaning and happiness that uh, the world offers us. Yeah, I love it. I really, I mean, I know I'm having fun with you here today, but it's also for me understanding um, I'm, I'm with people almost all of the time in my regular, let's call it my role with the network. I am talking to people. If you looked at my calendar, Shai, you'd be like, this woman cannot be an introvert. She cannot be spending this much time. But but when it comes time at the end of my day, I'm on Netflix, just saying, just saying. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. let's talk about the emotional communicative types. Why do you call them that? And then let's talk about the fourth chakra, the caretakers. Well, I, I call this group because there are three groups, actually, uh, that, uh, that, um, that uh, um, uh, are like uh, a greater uh, categories of uh, of uh, the seven types, and uh, and one of them is this this type called the the category called the emotional communicative, which means that uh, they are the ones who who find their fulfillment, they find their ful their meaning in this uh, uh, interrelatedness in the in the communication and relationship with people. But the fourth chakra type, the caretakers, and the fifth chakra type, the, the speakers, they are tremendously different from one another in that sense. Oh, the caretaker. Yes. So, I am so grateful uh -huh. for the caretaker people that have been in my life. I wouldn't be here today without these people. I really wouldn't whether they're therapists, my best friends, my bosses, tell us about them. Well, the caretakers are, uh, are pretty easy, uh, easy to be found, to be identified. It's simply, you, you, all you need is, is ask them, do you feel that, that all, we are here only for love? Do we feel we are here only to, to experience love and to spread love? And then they will say, what else? Mm -hmm. that, that, that for them is, is the most obvious because they, they are governed by the emotional center, which means that they are the most invested in relationships, in the, in the experience of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And they have such a high capacity uh, of, uh, of uh, devotion, of dedication, and they're uh, paying attention to, to others. Uh, and, and they are uh, uh, the closest to, to the experience of compassion, um, but because they are so emotional, they are sometimes hypersensitive and emotionally demanding, which means that their, their emotions, uh, instead of uh, being uh, turned towards others as, uh, in, in, a form of, in the form of compassion, in the form of uh, love and caring, sometimes these emotions turn backwards towards themselves and they want to, to be recognized and to hear that they are loved and they, that makes they can make them sometimes uh, pretty fragile, but also jealous and possessive. Mm. A couple things, couple mm -hmm. things. Do you think perhaps just just saying, and then we'll go yes. on because I, I want to get the others in. Can they come off as not fragile sometimes? Oh, of course. When, yeah, when yeah, they, yeah. When, first of all, when they are balanced by, by, by the secondary chakra type, you see if they have a, an empowering uh, second a other chakra type, which is what I call the secondary chakra type, that makes them, can make them uh, far less uh, sensitive and more uh, capable of loving others. And there, from, from that, of course, we have all these tremendous uh, examples in, in the history of mankind of, uh, of caretakers who were a demonstration of love in human form. Mm. Next. Drum roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tell us about the fifth. Well, that, that, that's, that's a double meaning, I would say, because... because 
it's not only introducing them, but the speakers, they, they love performing. They are the, 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 they love speaking. They are the educators, the teachers of the world. And they love influencing. You see, the, they, they have their throat chakra, uh, uh, the most energetic center in their body and in their soul, which means that their voice is the most meaningful for them. And uh, what they do with their voice is, uh, is spread ideas and spread uh, uh, inspiration and, uh, and hoping for a better world. They are gr uh, great idealists and they, they always have uh, uh, some grandest vision, some, uh, some, some amazing uh, dream for, for the world and for themselves. But sometimes they get uh, their head stuck in the clouds because they are so much into the vision that uh, they don't like uh, the, the actual step-to-step uh, -step, uh, uh, movement towards fulfilling that goal. So, uh, and, and they don't understand how to grasp reality because, uh, because it is uh, too practical for them. They want everything to, to just happen in their, in their own way, exactly the way they envision it. So that can keep them sometimes uh, confused and stuck. Mm. Now, this is really interesting because I, I want to go through the rest of them uh -huh. because I thought this was me too. Um, but I'll tell you why I don't think it is. Let's talk, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's talk about part three, mental spiritual types, mm. the thinkers. Yes, yes. The thinkers are the, the first of the, of the two in, in, in this group. And the, they are the, the, the most um, deeply, uh, the, the, the deepest uh, type uh, among the, the entire seven. And they, uh, they are the, the, the seekers, the scientists, the thinkers that, uh, that always look for answers. They always need to understand why, the why of things. They, they, they delve so deeply into the mysteries of, of existence and, uh, and are intensely philosophically inclined. So usually you can find them, they are quite introverted. Uh, speaking of introverts, they, uh, they don't like so much uh, crowds and, uh, and being among people. And actually they have some kind of an innate experience of observing the world from the outside. They, they, they don't feel so much uh, humans, but they feel uh, observers of humanity. Mm -hmm. So among them, we can find great scientists and uh, and uh, and but ones who love sitting in the room, just uh, completely unlike you. They they don't engage so much with people. They don't they don't like uh, uh, the actual communication, unless of course they have a secondary fifth chakra type. But uh, what they love the most is to is to to delve into the mysteries of their own mind, consciousness, and the uh, and the cosmos. Yeah. Um. I can think of people, and you're brilliant the way you name these people, right? So you give us, I'm having so much fun with this. You know, you talk about Einstein, and yes. I, I actually didn't th expect to see Einstein here, and I can tell you why in a minute. Uh -huh. um, but you do talk about some of these others. Definitely Freud, right? And yes. it's funny you put both Freud and Jung here. I personally <laughs> would have put Jung in the next one, but because I think he's one of the most misunderstood people. I happen to get my, my hands on a copy of a letter from him where he wrote uh, Bill W., who was the founder of AA, and he wrote this letter uh, back to, to Bill W. And in, in the letter, he says, I really wanted to do more spiritually. Mm -hmm. I was afraid. And mm -hmm. I learned so much about that letter. For those of you out there, Google the letter. Bill W. took like 40 years to write Jung and thank him. But then when Jung writes back, it totally disclosed a little bit about this man that they don't know about. But before I go off on that, let us get to the seventh chakra personality. Well, yes, the seven chakra personality type, uh, they, they constitute a 1% <laughs> within the world population, which, uh, which goes to show how rare they are. 
they are um, actually the, the the recluse, the the, the type of the monk that uh, that uh, feels from uh, from early age that uh, that they don't really belong to the world. They want they they belong to the to the realm of the spirit. Uh, mm-hmm. They belong to the to the subjective uh, level of of uh, of existence. Mm-hmm. And that's why they are they are most interested in the in the subtle layers of of their own consciousness and the and the layers the subtle layers of the world, and they are, they feel drawn to meditation. They feel drawn to to investigate uh, deeply, um, and to look through the the veil of of the world, uh, and to find God and the uh, and the the absolute and the uh, and. Uh, the essence of the world. Mm-hmm. So, so that of course makes them very dreamy and mm-hmm. quite ungrounded. They're, they're not mm-hmm. interested in in fulfilling uh, the ambitions of the world. And to tell you the truth, they they are also when when they find themselves in the Western society, uh, they end up being quite confused because they mm-hmm. try to adjust somehow uh, to to a society which values. The things that are so different from their own value system. Well, okay. So here's what I want to say. And I'm going to tell everybody because I said I would. If the sixth chakra and the seventh chakra had a baby, it would be me. Oh. Yeah, I know. I, I don't even know how to reconcile that. And let me tell you why. When I took, went through, and I and I want I want I want to get your opinion before I, before I do that because I only have five minutes left. But uh-huh. when I went through this, and I read and I went through the questions, and when it says, "Are you considered airy spacey?" Listen, when I was in the workplace as an executive, my bosses wrote on my performance review that they thought I was from another planet. When oh. I was seven years <laughs> old, when I was six years old in Catholic boarding school. I was kicked out of Catholic boarding school because I told them that Jesus from the ninth station of the cross talked to me. I wanted to become a nun from age four. So something was going on with me. I was so ungrounded by the time I hit 17, I became homeless. But that's why I say somehow I went from that and got to be here. Hmm. But I don't live my life. There's not a day that goes by that I don't live my life opening up the doors of spirituality. I have been Catholic, Baptist, Buddhist. I even ended up on the streets of New York in a white Hare Krishna outfit. Uh I've studied the Hindi religions. I've gone through all of the classes of New Thought, Science of Mind. So it's interesting when I read this, I think I'm caught, help me. I think I'm caught between two chakra types or maybe more. What did you pick me as? Well, I can't wait the, to hear. First of all, with this kind of description, you know, the, 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 there could be my guess, but uh, but when as soon as you're telling this story, it sounds like like it's, it's your major chakra type, the seventh uh, type. And then the secondary is the sixth. And perhaps the the um, the supportive chakra type is the second. Yes. So that's what I wanted to ask you because I went through your book. I love this. I love what you did here. I don't know if we have any copies left to give away, but can <laughs> you can you see how this allows us and allowed me in a fun and interesting way to explore myself? Mm-hmm. You know the the other personality types. I have found, especially the Myers-Briggs, my experience with it was quite judgmental. But as I read your book, I was intrigued. I wanted to know more. Okay, let's get let's get to something here. Every one of these has a strength and it has a challenge. Yes. Challenges. Exactly. Talk about how they help me because the challenge that I read, <laughs> you ask anybody on this team, the minute I walk in the door or I send an email and I say, I've got a great idea, they cringe. So tell us about how the challenges can help us as well as the strength in the book. 
Well, the the challenges you mean? Do you mean the 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 balancing part or? Yes, the balancing part. Yeah. Well, how can how they can help us? They can they they can basically smooth out the rough edges of our of yeah. our personality type. You see, because because every personality type uh, is overflowing with its own uh, let's say joy of uh, of way of being. And uh, and uh, the thing is that exactly those things that we don't think they they, they need to be balanced are, are what what is meant to be balanced in us. And uh, these challenges are, are basically what what might uh, bring us to a sort of uh, let's say uh, a self-destructive modes, the self-destructive behavior, or uh, or uh, interfering with others, uh, which means that that with, that our tendencies uh, uh, create imbalances in our surroundings. Aside from that, uh, we really need to celebrate our personality type, and and I really love what you say that it's a. Uh, uh, it's very different from other systems because I absolutely love all seven. You see, yeah. when I when I teach people in in courses, I always tell them because sometimes they get annoyed by by some of the personality types, and I tell them if there is one type that you don't like, your work isn't done. You see. Yeah, because because they are all so important, so essential yes. for our society. They constitute together the the wholeness of our world. We, uh, take one out, and the whole world collapses. Yeah. So in my car, I listen to a uh, uh, a, a minister talk. Right? People. Every time I say that, people said, "Oh my gosh, we didn't know you're that." Well, <laughs> I'm not that, but I listen to that because he's a positive, upbeat, spiritual possibility. So I found out the other day, Jessica and Linda were talking, and one of them said to the other, does she listen to that 24-7? And the other one answered, yes. <laughs> so I hope you'll come back, because I want to talk more about how multiple chakra types work together. And I love what you said. I look at these, and if you look for the personality types on my team, the chakra personality types, I am clear that I am not that logical, linear person. My friend Linda is. I need her. I'm also clear that I am not some of the others. And so I surround myself with these people because mm -hmm. I can be a little bit out there. I yes. don't know how to be otherwise, but I've tried. And I've tried. I kept a corporate job to 24 and a, and a half years, and it almost killed me. Also, you should know, my car color is orange. My mm -hmm. website for Transformation Talk Radio is purple. The Dr. Pat show is blue. What do you make of that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. One last question. What's your personal message, Shai? And give out your website again. I, I love what you've done. Thank you so much. Uh huh. What, what's my personal message? Um, my message is just, just uh, to, to know that, uh, that sometimes buried beneath, uh, beneath our uh, so socially uh, shaped uh, personality, there is our, our, the core of our being, the being that, uh, that uh, and knowing it uh, can really lead, lead us to true happiness, to true fulfillment. And we need to trust that and to start uh, looking beneath, uh, beneath the conditioning and uh, beneath what other people uh, tell us uh, that we should be or that we should do. It's not about social adjustment. Social adjustment would never lead us to, to genuine happiness. It's uh, it's not about what the world values. It's about what your mm. soul values, and I that love it. requires a tremendous type of listening. And I hope this book uh, can help us in doing that. Oh my gosh, that and then some. I hope you'll come back because I want to talk about how these all work together, how they work together, and thank you for helping me understand quite a bit more about me, and more importantly, 
how to create the balance that you talked so beautifully about. I love this book, by the way, and I am going to be getting it for my friends. Thank you so much for today, Shai. Benny, thank you for pushing all the right buttons. Thank you all for tuning us in and turning us on. We will see you next time. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.